I told you I'd be back, right? And by back, I mean it's like 45 seconds after I finished the last video and I haven't even moved except to lean forward to push the button on my phone and then lean back in the chair so the shot looked slightly different because it looks like my head is not utterly gigantic. This is why I'll never shave my head again because I don't have a neck. So it looks like... It looks like... It looks like Harley Davidson version of Michael Chiklis. And nobody needs like bad Harley Barbie Michael Chiklis. But this video is going to be slightly less rambling than the last one because I have notes. Uh, this is about writing. I called it writing while the world burns. These are eight or nine tips on how to get words on the page when things are stressful, when, I don't know, when your entire family is on lockdown because there's a pandemic, when, or just any other time when it's hard to make words. I have had a hell of a time making words most of this year. Hell, most of the last 15 months, I've had a hell of a time making words, going through the last stages of my dad's illness, going through his death, my mourning process. I'm just now getting back after 15 months of dealing specifically with that. And that's not even to count the years of dealing with my mother's death and her illness before and what all that did to my mental health. So I'm still reinventing myself over the real world imposing itself on my fiction. I figure you guys probably have some of the same troubles. So here are some things that you can do, some actionable items that when it's hard to make words will help. They help me anyway. Number one, and this is how I get through the day. This is how I make books happen. And you can tell by this shelf that I've made a few books happen in the last 10 years. We've got, yeah, that whole top shelf, though, that's all me. Um, pretty much everything up there is solo titles. And then all of this most of this is, that's all anthologies, several of which I've edited and all the rest of which I have stories in. And that's not everything because behind my giant head is fantastic hope. Look, I just kicked the crap out of, yeah. The inventory shelves are kind of bare because I haven't reloaded since um, Saga because... Saga was the writer's conference that we hosted, we being Falstaff Books, hosted March 6th through 8th. And right about March 9th is when things started really getting real here in the U.S. with the coronavirus. So I didn't reorder inventory yet until I see when the next convention will be attending is going to be. Currently, as of today, March 20-something? As of today, March 20-something, our next appearance is, con is Charlotte Comic-Con on April 26th. I don't know if that's going to happen. If it does, we'll be there. If not, our next convention appearance isn't until the end of May. So I don't need to restock the shelves just yet. But Fantastic Hope, this is another anthology that I'm in. It comes out on April 7th. It's edited by Laurel K. Hamilton and William McCaskey. William is one of my Falstaff authors and Laurel K. Hamilton. Um, if you've ever heard of me, you've probably heard of Laurel. Also in this book is Kevin J. Anderson, Jonathan Mayberry, Ellie Modessa Jr., Patty Briggs. Um, I think Casey, Casey Azell is in here, Rob Hampson. Some folks that are good friends of mine, some people that I'm big fans of, some people that are fortunate enough to be both, like Jonathan Mayberry's 
a friend of mine and I'm a huge fan of his work. So I'm thrilled to be in a book with people of this stature and with my friends. That's super cool. So we'll put that right there. Tips on how to write in during the apocalypse. That's clickbaity enough, isn't it? How to, how to make words when the world ends. One, write in short bursts, writing sprints, little chunks. If you have a word goal like I do, which is about 2,000 words a day, depending on how fast you write, that could mean you're sitting at a computer for several hours. Well, that might not work. You're sitting there and worry starts to creep in. You're sitting there and you hear something on CNN from the other room and now you're worried. You hear you're sitting there and I don't know, your friend in Atlanta text sends out a message on Facebook and said, Hey, so now my wife and I are both sick. You know, the more time you sit still for me, the harder it is. Now I, I have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which I could use a little more hyperactivity and a little less attention deficit, but that's what we've got. So because I'm ADD, um, it's impossible for me to sit and focus for two hours. So I break it up. I write 500 words at a time. I sit down. 30, 40 minutes, I write 500 words. I know that my maximum attention span is about 45 minutes. And after that, I need a shift or we're going to, you're going to lose me. So 500 words, I'm good. I can actually get a thousand words in 45 minutes. So if I'm cooking, I can blow through two of these chunks. But if you're trying to get, if you're trying to get a thousand words, get it 250 words at a time. You can sit and just write a paragraph. You want to write a page? Do it a paragraph at a time. Make it into bite-sized chunks. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Make your workload reasonable. I have probably 200 books in the back of my truck that still need to be unloaded two weeks later. Why are they still there? One, because I'm lazy. Two, because I don't need them. Three, because I haven't mentally broken it down into, okay, let's go get two boxes. It's, oh God, I've got to move all that crap. It's not up here. Hey, let's go get a couple of things out of the truck. And then it's a couple of things out of the truck. Do that with your writing. Not, oh God, I have to write a novel. You don't have to write a novel. You have to write a word. You have to write a page. You have to write a chapter. You write a word, well, and then you write the next word. Then you got a sentence. You do a couple of those, you got a paragraph. You do a few of those, you got a page. You do a couple of those, hey, you got a chapter. I mean, hell, you do half of a page and you got a James Patterson chapter. Break it up into chunks that fit the attention span that you have right now. And understand that the world out there may keep you from having the attention span you're accustomed to having. That's okay. A million years ago, Christian Slater was in a movie called Pump Up of the Volume that I really liked. It hit me in a formative time. I don't know, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade. I don't remember. But he said in that movie, you know, just because you act fucked up in a fucked up time doesn't mean that you're fucked up. We're in an unprecedented time in our country's history. No one watching this video has lived through anything in the United States like this pandemic. I guarantee you. 
it's okay to not know how to react to that. So make your writing workload into digestible chunks. Then you can eat the elephant. Number two, find a writing buddy. When I was in high school, <laughs> many, many years ago, Will Clark was one of my very best friends. Um, we had known each other, I don't know, since fifth or sixth grade. We were tight. He was my buddy. In our senior year, he said, hey, I need some help. Of course, what, what do you need? Will you run track with me? This was not at a time in my life when I responded to ridiculous questions like that as I do now, which is, are you high, Clary? But I did ask him if he was fucking nuts. Will wanted to get into the Air Force Academy. To get into the Air Force Academy, he had to letter in a sport. Will had run track the year before. Our school had a policy because our our men's boys track team was not the greatest. To encourage participation, if you participated for two years running, you would letter. Will needed that letter. Will also felt like he might not make it through if he didn't have a running buddy. I was Will's running buddy. I was only there to run with him and be his friend and go along. And I ended up enjoying it. I ran the mile and occasionally even the two mile. And that I figure between practice and meets, I figure that did it. I'd never needed to run again in my life. And it's fairly obvious that I haven't. Um, <clears throat> sorry, seasonal allergies, kids. It's a real thing. But I was Will's running buddy. Find yourself a writing buddy. If you don't know anyone who writes or anyone who writes that is at your same point in their career, look on Facebook. There's tons of Facebook groups. There's one that Vanessa Junta runs called The Writing Tribe. It's very supportive of genre fiction writers in particular. You should check it out. It's a great group. People are very uplifting. People are supportive. You can probably find a writing buddy there. Someone who just check in every day. Hey, did you get anything on the page today? Yeah, I did. I got 500 words. That's great. Well, I wanted a thousand, but you got 500. That's great. You need encouragement. You need positive reinforcement. Not everybody is at a point in their career where they can have a Facebook group with people who, when you post some random thing about, hey, I'm venturing out to get toilet paper, pray for me, you get 20 people making jokes back to you because they read your stuff and they think you're funny. Okay, they read your stuff and at least two of them think you're funny. But you, even if you've never published anything, you can find somebody in a Facebook writers group or on Twitter, hashtag writing community, who will support you and work with you. And you have to give as good as you get. But you can find these people to help make you feel accountable, make you feel encouraged, make you do what you want to do. Third thing, don't worry about your word count. I have a word count goal. I have a word count goal because I have fans who want more books. I have books that need to be published and I have a mortgage that gets paid by my books. 
you don't have those specific pressures, so you don't necessarily have deadlines. Get words. If you're not published and you're not on deadline, then get any words. If you are published and you are on deadline, like many of my fall staff authors are, and yes, if you think I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. Love you. Take the book. You're under contract for a 30,000 word novella. Okay. The book is due May 1st. All right. You have about five weeks. 30,000 words divided by five weeks is 6,000 words a week. 6,000 words divided by, we'll say, six days. Give yourself a day off each week. That's 1,000 words a day. 1,000 words a day divided by four writing sprints is 250 words per session. Break it down into chunks. But if you're not under contract, just write something. One word. I was on a panel talking about process with Eric Flint, and he says, I write one word a day. That's the goal. One word. He followed it up by saying, usually, when I write one word, I like it. And then I write a word that goes after it. And then I write a sentence. And da 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 And then I've got books. Eric Flint has got a lot of books. So this process obviously works for him. He's also dapper as fuck. So I wish I could rock a bowler, but I would really, really look ridiculous. So don't, don't compare yourself to somebody else's word counts. Their pressures are different than yours. Their process is different than yours. Eric Flint's process is different than mine. Ray Feist's process is different than mine. I have no idea what Ray's process is. Laurel Hamilton's process is different than mine. Figure out your process. Write something. Tip four, Xanax. I have never had a problem with anxiety in my life until March of this year. Between trying to produce a writer's conference that my company was financially responsible for and the potential of an impending pandemic, I needed some help. So I got in touch with my doctor and I got a prescription for anti-anxiety medication. It helps me sleep. When I get too wound up to function in the middle of the day, it backs me down and helps me function. I am not ashamed of that at all. I take blood pressure pills because I'm fat. I take gout pills because I'm fat and if I don't, my foot hurts. I take well, butrin, because I'm a little bit crazy. And now I take Xanax when I need to because the world is on fire and I need help to get through it. If you need help to get through it, go find that help. It's okay. If it's a, if it's talk therapy, go for it. If it's a psychiatrist, knock yourself out. If it's your general practitioner, Go for it. Telemedicine is still up and working. If you need psychological help to work when things are crazy, then get it. Look, one in four people in the United States is diagnosed with some form of mental illness. I am one of those four. And I talk about it a lot because I was in my 40s before I ever got help for it. And I would love to know how many books I could have if I had gotten help sooner. So Better Living Through Chemistry is a real fucking thing. 
And don't be ashamed if you need some help, especially right now when the world is all screwy. Tip five, reread your favorites. What's a book you love? What is something you love that made you want to write? Take a day, take two days, go reread that. If it's the first Dresden Files book, get it. It's great. If it's the first Anita Blake Vampire Hunter book, go for it. If it's the first Honor Harrington book, if it's Magician Apprentice, if it's Lord of the Rings, hell, if it's something of mine, then you should expand your tastes a little. No. Go reread stuff that inspires you. There are certain books that I just go back to and I'll reread a bit here and there whenever I feel like it. Reread the things that made you want to write in the first place. Maybe try a new genre. I'm primarily an urban fantasy and comedic horror writer. I That's most of what I do. I'm not working on anything like that right now. The past couple of days, I've been writing a high fantasy thing. I really like it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Working on Bubba right now feels like work. And it's hard because it's hard to write comedy when you're worried. It's a little easier writing bloody adventure fantasy when you're worried about the world because, hey, you get to kill people. Uh, and maybe you imagine that they look like people you don't like. Yeah, we all do that. So write a space opera if all you've ever written is contemporary romance. Write a paranormal romance if all you've ever written is thrillers. Try something different. It may shake loose something in your head and make it easier for you to be productive. Number seven, try something you've always wanted to write. I've always wanted to write high fantasy. I mean, I've written high fantasy. Do I have a copy? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> it's called Queen of Cats. It's a high fantasy novel. I call it a high fantasy heist book. That's what I've always wanted to write. I want to be Ray Feist. I want to be Tad Williams. I don't want to be David Eddings because there's been some things revealed about like his personal life that are kind of creepy. But I, I want to write the stories that I loved reading when I was younger. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm working on a high fantasy thing. You can do that too. You ever want, if you wanted to write Star Wars, write fucking Star Wars fan fiction. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Don't share it. Don't try to make money on it. Don't infringe on anybody's copyright. But if you want to ship Castiel and Dean, go for it. Write Supernatural slash fic. Write something you've always wanted to write. If you want to write Pounded in the Butt by my new anthology publication, Fantastic Hope, then you write your own Chuck Tingle parody. Huh, how meta is that? Write a parody of a Chuck Tingle book. That's like a parody of a parody of a par Wow, I think I just confused myself. Yeah, so I just blew my own mind. Give me a second. And my final tip. My final suggestion for writing in a time of cholera, blog, journal, diary. I started writing as a blogger back in, I don't know, 2000, 2001, before I ever thought about writing fiction. I blogged every day. You don't have to show it to anybody. You don't have to put it up on the internet. Just Write down your thoughts. If you do decide to share it with the world, I found that it helped develop my voice 
my narrative voice very much comes through in those old blog posts. So just barf up words on the page, free write. Write what you think. If there's a neighborhood cat that you spent half an hour sitting on your stoop playing with the neighborhood cat, write about the neighborhood cat. I have three and they're adorable. I don't know whose kitties they are, but they're so sweet. I love those cats. Um, much nicer than my cat. By the way, he's nowhere to be seen. He's probably still upstairs asleep at the foot of my wife's bed. But yeah, blog, journal. You can make Facebook notes. You can make them consumable, but you don't have to. Get something out there. It doesn't have to be publishable. But if you want to create, create. Be like Nike. Just do it. So get out there. Hopefully, one or more of these tips will be useful to you. And if not, maybe whatever I come up with next week will be. In the meantime, we've got a lot more content coming here on the Falstaff Books YouTube channel, including Falstaff Spotlights every... Oh, crap. I'm going to forget my own schedule. I think Tuesdays? Yeah, Tuesdays is, every, is Falstaff Spotlights, where either we post up the first chapter of an audiobook and give that away for free, or I or one of the authors reads the first chapter of a Falstaff book so that you can get a taste for the book and go buy it. Then later on in the week, we have Book Babble every Thursday. That's me and Melissa MacArthur at conventions talking to some of your favorite authors and helping you discover some books that they love and books that we love and hopefully discover some new authors. And then every Friday, oh, five-minute book reviews. Yeah, when I read and talk about books. You know, I should probably do this anthology at some point. Maybe, I don't know, promote the thing that I do get paid for if it sells enough copies. So, yeah, I'll do that. But, oh, I might go take a nap. Hmm, about time for lunch. Anyway. You guys, go do what you got to do. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon. All right?